Hello and welcome. Firstly, I want to say a massive thank you for joining us here today. I'm Tom Keynes. I'm a product manager here at Distant Journeys, putting together all things Africa. Today marks the first um, of our Journeys Online series, where we're going to talk in some detail about our brand new, very best of Kenya itinerary and its many, many highlights. So um, get relaxed, um, grab a cup of tea, and let's get started. So how do we decide on an itinerary? It takes a huge amount of planning, a huge amount of preparation, but what we think we've come up with is an all-encompassing, in-depth itinerary across Kenya. Um, there's a lot of itineraries available that only focus on maybe the west or the east of the country, but we wanted to make sure that you hit every bucket list highlight this country has to offer. Um, so this is what we've come up with, the very best of Kenya. Um, we wanted to make sure you spend enough time in the Masai Mara, um, a real wildlife haven where you'll come back with just fantastic memories that you'll speak about with your friends and family for a long time, making them all very jealous, I imagine. Um, we wanted to also include um, cultural experiences in there to break up some of that wildlife viewing whether it be a city tour in Nairobi or um, visiting a Maasai tribe, those just perfectly complement um, this itinerary. And as we'll talk about lots, we wanted to make sure we give you every opportunity to see the big five, plus the other wildlife that is on offer and bird life, just fantastic bird life opportunities um, across the country. So making sure you have ample, ample opportunity to see to see everything that uh, the country does have to offer is really of utmost importance to us when putting together an itinerary. Um, we also do travel east, as I've mentioned. We do start to get those enviable views of uh, the incredible Mount Kilimanjaro too. So here we're going to explain a little bit about how you're going to get around and who with. This picture on the left is the vehicle or one like that you'll travel around in. So it's a 4x4 vehicle, sits six people comfortably. Um, the top does go up so when you're out in the national parks and reserves and there's wildlife nearby that can go up and you can stand up and look out and get very close to, to the wildlife that's out, out there. A real fantastic um, experience to you know see that see that close by. We um, have our local guides there on the right. Um, they are your drivers and your expert guides for spotting wildlife. They'll they can spot. I've said it before, but they can spot wildlife from a mile off. They they know exactly where to look, where there's been sightings before. They all radio each other to tell each other where they've had sightings so they a lot of you know a lot of the drivers do stay in contact so everyone can have that experience of seeing the, the amazing wildlife that is on offer uh, and they'll give you expert commentary and insight into the country and the people and what you're looking at on the drive and they're just a fantastic resource while you're there um, so yeah just real invaluable insight that they give so we depart the UK um, around 10 a.m. approximately uh, from London Heathrow, um, take a flight with British Airways, um, arrive into Nairobi around uh, 8.30 in the evening, their time. You're then warmly welcomed by our team on the ground who will transfer you to your hotel in a minibus in Nairobi um, for your stay just for that first night just to get your head down and um, You've got you know, a big comfy bed at the Moven Pick. Um, it's a centrally located hotel with nice large rooms, comfy beds. Um, you know, just perfect what you what you'd expect from a, a central hotel. Um, a nice, really big pool as well. Um, if you do want to take a dip. From Nairobi, we then head north uh, to Aberdeer. Um, the property that we stay at in Aberdeer is, is a real highlight. It's called the Ark. Uh, based on the fact that it looks a lot like Noah's Ark. Um, and this is a unique hotel that overlooks a watering hole and a salt lick um, just outside. So it attracts um, elephants, rhino, buffalo, 
um, hyenas and sometimes uh, bigger cats as well um, to for them to, to, to come and have a drink. The hotel has three viewing decks over that kind of watering hole and salt lick. So just from the hotel, you can see, um, you know, a lot of wildlife activity outside. Um, they also have uh, a photo hide bunker underneath, uh, which just gives you perfect uninterrupted views of the wildlife outside, as you can see on that last picture to the right. Uh, that's my big head in the way um, of, you know, just the elephants um, outside. And they're just, yeah, they're so close. It's, it's a real fantastic experience to just be relaxing in a hotel, but with the wildlife outside. Um, they do have a fantastic thing called The Button as well, uh, which is something that you can turn on or off if you prefer. But if you have it on during the night, um, it will alert you if there is any wildlife activity outside. Um, so if there's rhinos, elephants, hyenas or leopards, there'll be a different buzz um, that will go on in your room. So if you feel, um, you know, that you haven't seen enough elephants or if there's some, some an unusual sighting outside, you'll be alerted um, and you can quickly jump up, jump up on your put on your slippers and quickly run out to the viewing area to see what's going on. Um, unfortunately, when I was there, it didn't go off during the night, um, but they do say um, a lot does happen during the night. So I think I was just unlucky. But yeah, real fantastic first kind of wildlife experience on your trip. From the highlands of Aberdeer, we then head further north to Samburu. Um, it's a lot warmer, a lot more arid here, but it gives you, um, again, just a fantastic opportunity for wildlife viewing um, because there is a, a river that runs runs right through the area, um, which always is going to attract lots of wildlife. So you, the likes of elephants, leopards, cheetahs, crocodiles and wild dogs have all been spotted in Samburu, um, as well as they've got their own rare northern special five. Um, which you can only see in this, this part of Kenya. So that's the, the Grevy zebra, uh, the reticulated giraffe, uh, Somali ostrich, Baza oryx, and the Geranuk. Um, so you can spot those uh, when you're doing your game drives in Samburu. Um, and where you'll stay is uh, the, the Samburu Simba Lodge. Um, it boasts um, vast views over, over the savannah where wildlife does often walk by. Um, so yeah, and, and fantastic sunsets as well, uh, in Samburu. Um, so definitely sit out, um, you know, where you can and, uh, with maybe a drink and, and watch the, the sunset cause it is, it is a beautiful one there. From Samburu, we then start heading south, uh, to Lake Navasha. On the way, we will stop at Naya Baruru Falls. Um, to look out over the fantastic waterfall, obviously, uh, and then to have some lunch uh, before carrying on to, to Lake Navasha Simba Lodge. So again, staying at another Simba Lodge. Um, this one backs right up onto the lake. Um, there's zebras and waterbuck and uh, sometimes giraffe that wander freely around the grassy areas of the hotel. Um, and in the evening, uh, hippos are known to come up to uh, keep the lawn short. Um, but the, the lodge itself is, is beautiful, really authentic um, Kenyan decor um, with lots of dark wood. Um, during our time in Lake Navasha, we'll do a half-day uh, game drive to Lake Nakuru, um, famous for uh, being the home of many, 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 many flamingos. Uh, as you drive up to it, sometimes it's just a hue of pink because there is so many flamingos on it, uh, as well as... 400 other um, species of birds, so really good um, if, if you're a keen birder. Um, the half-day game drive also does give you the opportunity to see the black and white rhinos um, that do call the area their home, um, as well as the endangered Rothschild giraffe. Um, we also then get a boat safari on Lake Navasha later that day, um, where you'll go on having a look for further hippos um, on, on the lake, as well as fish eagles, spoonbills, cormorants. There, there's just an abundance of birds, um, and going out on the, on the lake is a real nice difference to going out on the game drives. Uh, it just gives you another perspective and uh, lots more wildlife to encounter. So yeah, real, real fantastic area to to do a lot of a lot more wildlife viewing. 
and you come to visit the Masai Mara. So for a lot of people, this will be the, the real bucket list highlight of the whole trip. Um, you'll have seen, um, you know, the Masai Mara on TV and read it in books. And it is truly, it really lives up to the hype. Fantastic area. Just driving in the amount of wildlife that's, uh, that you see just from the drive into the park. It's just amazing and then on the game drives you just you just spoil um so a really fantastic area um where we spent three nights um at mara maisha camp so a real romantic um kind of tented camp that has that old world feel of a of a safari lodge um you stay in these fantastic tents made with um kind of local wood um they're just yeah they're just it's a really fantastic property to stay at for three nights um, whilst there, you also um, get the chance to visit the Maasai tribe, um, where you learn about the culture, how they live today amongst, you know, the, with things becoming more and more modern, how they, they live and carve out their lifestyle still, um, and their connection to the land, because um, a lot of them are, are cattle farmers these days, uh, and you'll just get that experience of, of talking with them, um, and it's a real beautiful experience that you'll, you'll think about often once you're back home. Uh, there is also a fantastic optional excursion uh, on offer where it's a hot air balloon safari. So it's up very early in the morning, but you know, this is the time where it's definitely worth it, where you'll then head out to where the hot air balloon launches. You'll go up and you'll see it for sunrise um, and just get to see some wildlife from a, from a you know, bird's eye view, so it's a real, you know, once in a lifetime experience uh, over the Mara uh, in search of, you know, wildlife. You'll touch down for a breakfast as well um, in the wild, so a really, uh, really amazing experience to, to chance to do. It does come at a, an optional, uh, at an extra cost, um, but, you know, if you're in Kenya and potentially the only time that you'll do Kenya, definitely worth uh, worth doing I am I think. From Masai Mara we then start heading east for day 10 like I mentioned we do we do come back around to Nairobi um, after hitting a couple of the other destinations. Uh, on the way back into Nairobi we stop at Cultiva Farm Restaurant, a really uh, delightful farm to table dining experience, uh, all locally grown produce um, just a really nice lunch experience back uh, as you head back into the city. Um, we have touched on this already, but we do include a cultural tour of Nairobi. So it's called the Nai Nami Street Tour. Um, guests are taken through the city um, by uh, street youth and how tour guides. But also, you get to explore some of the city's best architecture, such as the Nairobi Railway Museum and City Hall. So again, it's it's a really good way to see, um, you know, get under the skin of of Nairobi um, and see something different other than you know the amazing wildlife that you're going to see. This breaks up some of that with just a, a cultural aspect of of the country that you're travelling through. On the drive out to Amphasela, you do start seeing in the distance um, potentially views of Mount Kilimanjaro as it starts coming into, into sight. Um, you stay at Kibo Safari Camp. Again, real lovely camp to stay at. Um, flowing kind of drapes. Again, furniture made out of the local wood. Um, it's got an old world romance about it. A lovely place to stay for a couple of nights. Um, also, there is a pizza oven on site, which is very welcome at this point of the trip sometimes. So, uh, and they make a very delicious pizza, I can tell you. Um, and then from, from Amboseli, you get to go out on these game drives with that backdrop of Mount Kilimanjaro. Um, and it just makes for some really beautiful wildlife viewing uh, opportunities, especially for pictures. Uh, you can just get some some almost professional looking pictures with the views of you know an elephant in front of Mount Kilimanjaro, just fantastic. Um, and then there is also a population of big tusked elephants, um, so they're called big tuskers over there. Um, and these are the elephants where the tusks almost reach the ground. Um, there's not a huge amount of them left, but they do um, kind of spend their time between Amboseli and Taita, where you go next. So a really good opportunity to see these as well. I'm really amazing when you do do see one because it is really impressive the the the, the length of their tusks so
Yeah. Onward we travel to Tighter Hills, um, where we'll be staying at Tighter Hills Safari Resort and Spa. Um, a real interesting property uh, where it's kind of hidden and intertwined with the trees and uh, kind of forest around it. Um, fantastic views from a viewing deck right at the top of the hotel over the hills. Um, and they also do have a World War I museum on site. And we do include a little tour that, uh, where you'll be taken around um, by a historian to kind of have a look at um, the artifacts that they've got and learn a little bit about the history of, of Kenya's uh, involvement in World War I, um, which is really interesting to, to history buffs and those that, um, that, you know, just fancy something a little bit different in, in the trip as well. So really nice experience at the hotel. Um, from Tighter Hills as well, you, um, you'll you go to Zima Springs. Um, this is uh, where a lot of water comes down from, from the nearby hills, uh, and it's formed this oasis for a lot of animals to, to come and have a drink and to cool off. So expect lots of hippos uh, and Nile crocodiles as well, who've made their way all the way down here. Um, and um, it's a yeah, it's a real good experience to see a lot of hippos. Um, they're very noisy, um, but yeah, it's, it's a really, uh, really cool experience. Um, and Titer is known as a real kind of paradise for, for birds as well. So if you are a keen birder, um then this is you know uh this is fantastic over 350 species three of which are are, are endemic to here uh such as the tighter thrush tighter palace and the tighter white eye um so again just an abundance of opportunity to to see more wildlife um from a, a different area with the backdrop of those those tighter hills as well so um and that for if you're not doing the extension to Mombasa, um, this will be the kind of last uh, wildlife viewing opportunity that you have. Um, so do enjoy it. Today is the last day of the tour um, and you get to experience the Madaraka Express. It's Kenya's only single gauge railway. Um, you get to you know, trade in the 4x4 vehicle for the cabin of the train. Um, it's just a new perspective just to see Kenya um, and the chance to spot wildlife from your window as well. Um, and if not, you just get to see you go through the towns and villages um, between Taita Hills and Nairobi. Um, and it's just a nice experience to kind of finish off your trip. Um, when you do arrive in Nairobi, you are you are met by um, by your guide um, and then taken to um, a hotel just so you can you know freshen up have dinner before your flight that evening so the whole day it's just quite a nice relaxed finish to to your trip before you do take that overnight flight back um, back to the uk uh, and onward maybe to your regional regional airport as well so um, a really nice last day um and you know where you might be a bit sad that the whole trip is over um but hopefully you know raising a glass to a to a fantastic trip so this is it, this is the very best of Kenya, our 16 day itinerary giving you a fantastic amount of time to explore the whole country um, was 6295 but with our early booking offer that's on at the moment you can get it for, from 6095 per person so with £200 off per person if you book by the 31st of August 2024 Dates of travel are between January and October 25 um, just giving you the best chance of uh, decent weather to spot all that um, amazing wildlife. So here's a bit of a recap of what your holiday includes. So a small group tour with max 24 passengers, um, return economy flights from London Heathrow with regional connecting flights from those, uh, those local airports close to you. Um, low, uh, carefully selected accommodation, real little hand-picked gems throughout. Uh, meals worth over a thousand pounds, so daily breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, a local guide um, who's a real expert on the area. So many unforgettable experiences throughout. Um, so many game drives, um, all overseas trans transfers and transport, of course. And then just that peace of mind that you know your holiday is protected. You already hopefully get the feel that you are going to come back with 
unforgettable experiences um, which you'll just talk about for years and years, hopefully with friends and family, um, just some highlights that I think are particularly interesting in the, in the itinerary are uh, boat safari on Lake Nabasha, that's a real standout for me, I think that's a real fantastic uh, experience and visiting the Maasai village, just really beautiful cultural experience where you get to learn how they live um, in the world that we're now in um, and then just you know the constant views when you're near Amboseli of, of Mount Kilimanjaro really are breathtaking so those are some of my particular standouts. So more game drive than you can shake a stick at um, you know y y you'll know by now that we've included a lot of game drives for you to really make the most of your time here in the country so up to you know 14 game drives to try and catch a glimpse of the big five all the bird life on offer plus all the other wildlife that there is uh, across kenya so just making sure that you you, you do have the, the best experience possible for all those that want the holiday to continue we have got an optional extension to diani beach so that's about an hour south of mombasa so at the end when other guests go off to Nairobi for their flight home, you'll actually take the Madaraka Express uh, eastwards towards Mombasa. You'll be picked up um, and then taken an hour south to the golden sands of Diani Beach, staying at the, the beautiful Leopard Beach Resort um, for five nights. Um, it's a real fantastic hotel with like enviable, enviable position on the beach. Um, They've got five restaurants. One in particular uh, was my favourite uh, is Lemongrass. So it's an Asian fusion restaurant with um, you know an open kitchen, so you can see all the chefs at work and kind of interact with them. So it's a really good experience when you're there. Um, they also do you know barbecues down on the beach um, when the when the weather's good, which it often is. Um, so a really lovely way to end uh, a trip, just relaxing having a dip in the massive pool um, so yeah just a, a really nice uh, optional extension to, to the holiday. Here you'll see our departure dates and prices um, so um, departures going from Jan 25 to October 25 from 6095 per person that's if you book by the 31st of August 2024 and you do save yourself £200 per person. Um, across the slide you'll see information about single supplements, deposits, upgrades and, and visa information. All this information is uh, in our brochure or on our website. Um, and then if you've got any questions, I'll, I'll be answering those in a, in a, in a little while for you. The very best of Kenya is also available as a private tour and you'll see relevant supplements here that are added to the main tour price. A private tour basically means you can enjoy the itinerary we've shared today with your own choice of departure date and a private driver, vehicle and personal tour guide. Uh, if you're a couple celebrating a special occasion or maybe just a group of friends who like to holiday together, you'll find the option of private touring in Kenya surprisingly affordable. I have given you a fairly brief overview I suppose of the itinerary so for further information about the tour or to request a brochure please visit uh, the website here distantjourneys.co.uk forward slash vbok so very best of Kenya to find out uh, more information on, on what you need. I wanted to say thank you so much for your time today I hope you have found this session useful um, I have had your questions coming through here so thank you for sending those in I'll now answer as many as I can. So our team behind the scenes have been uh, collating all your questions. Thank you again. Uh, I'll answer as many as I can now for you. Um, the first one I've got is, is Dublin available as a regional departure? Not at the moment, uh, but we do have Belfast uh, as an option or can quote for the land only tour price if you wanted to arrange your own flights. Um, do you need a visa for Kenya? You are required to obtain an ETA visa uh, before traveling. You can apply for it within 90 days of travel on the Kenyan Civil Aviation Authority website. The cost is uh, at the moment $32.50. Um, 
do you need vaccinations to travel to Kenya? We advise to consult your GP or a local travel clinic uh, for up-to-date information because this does change quite a lot uh, regarding vaccinations um, you need for travel to Kenya. Um, so tipping, tipping is always a big one that we get. So tipping what's normal, uh, the custom amount to tip and what currency to use when you're in Kenya. We recommend approximately between eight to 12 pounds per person per day, um, up to a maximum of 75 pounds. And the currency best to use there is the Kenyan shilling, which you can get only in within Kenya as well. Um, question, uh, which is number five. So are, are the recent political issues in Kenya likely to impact this tour? Um, as our first tour to Kenya doesn't run until Janu January next year, we're hoping the unrest in Nairobi has dissipated by then. We are constantly monitoring the situation like these across the world uh, and follow any FCO and government advice. So um, question six, so I heard that Kenya has a ban on plastics. Uh, is this true? So yes, Kenya are fairly strict on single-use plastics, so they can fine you for having a plastic bag or a single-use water bottle. Uh, when you arrive, you are given a uh, reusable wa water bottle when, when you're there, so that's good. Um, what sort of weather should we expect? So that's a, always an important one. We have only organized tours that travel during Kenya's uh, dry seasons, missing their, their two rainy seasons. Uh, the weather you should expect is warm and sunny, uh, uh, but maybe a potential of an odd shower from time to time. Um, are we guaranteed to see wildlife on the tour? So whilst we are traveling to the prime spots for wildlife, as we have discussed, um, we can never guarantee the viewing of wild animals, unfortunately. Although I'd be very, very surprised if you didn't see anything. Um, our local guides will give you absolutely every opportunity to, to spot wildlife. Um, what should you wear on safari? We advise that neutral colours are best on safaris as not to spook any wildlife. Long sleeves and trousers are good for keeping your skin protected as well as a hat and decent walking shoes. Um, layers are also great because uh, even though it is warm and sunny in the morning and in the evening it can get a bit chilly so having some layers are, are really important. Um, <clears throat> how easy is it to see the wildlife or take photos through the pop-up jeeps that you, you go around in. Um, this person has said that they're only uh, five foot one uh, and has only been in jeeps in the past. So with this, um, they are pop-up jeeps so the roof does does come up. Um, the driver will say if if you are you know five foot one potentially that you can go up on the seat as well and you should still be able to get a good view out. Um, through the windows as well you can see, see the wildlife as well so you should have every opportunity to, to see wildlife as well. Um, is there any opportunity for a walking safari? So some of the safari lodges that you go to can offer guided bush or nature walks. Um, these are available at an additional cost and can be arranged in resort when you're there. Um, luggage allowance, so what is the luggage allowance? So it's 15 kg. You'll need to take a soft-sided bag for ease of storage in the vehicles because there isn't a huge amount of room in the back. So a soft-sided case is, is what's needed. Um, and then is this suitable for solo travelers? So yes, absolutely. It's a small group tour of max 24 passengers, but solo travelers are welcome. Information on single supplements is available online as well. Um, so we're getting through to the last few questions here. Um, I have heard that it's best not to wear camouflage in Kenya. Is this correct? So yes, we do advise against wearing camouflage pattern in Kenya. The military do wear this and find it can find it offensive. Others wearing it if you're not in the military. So yeah, leave your leave your camouflage at home. Um, will we be making comfort stops between destinations? So yep, there's there's plenty of comfort stops um, on the drives between the parks and the reserves. Um, these are normally at curio shops, which are just little shops that have souvenirs in. You can stop for a drink and a snack um, and, and use the facilities there as well. Mm. Um, we've got a couple of questions about the Diani Beach extension as well. So what is the cost of the single supplement for the Diani Beach extension? That is from 195 pounds. And is it possible to upgrade to all-inclusive at Diani Beach? Um, so yes, absolutely, the all-inclusive option is an additional £50 per person per night. So that 
is all of our questions for today. Um, once again, thank you so much for your time. Uh, if I haven't been able to answer your question, I apologize, but please do check out our FAQ page uh, online at distantjourneys.co.uk forward slash FAQs. Uh, as promised, we will also share a copy of this webinar and the Q&A session later today via email. I hope, I really do hope that you found today useful. Anyone interested in discussing the holiday further can uh, contact our reservations team on 0800 141 3714 or visit us online at distantjourneys.co.uk forward slash VBOK, so very best of Kenya. And once again, thank you so much for joining us.